I want to invite the church to stand and join in the invocational prayer and then remain standing as we go to our praise song, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. It'll be on the screen and on page 224 in the hymnal. Pray with me, Pastor, please come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and may our lives by you be blessed. Come, Emmanuel, dwell with us. Make us your people indeed, the people through whom you can bring peace and justice to the world. Amen. Christ and reign, claim your rightful place in our hearts and in the midst of our community. Plant the seeds of hope among us. Establish your reign on earth through us. Good Christian friends rejoice. While we are standing, let me share two, two of the announcements that did not get uh, before you. Ladies' Day Out program this Thursday, 11.30, at the Waffle House. I guess that answers all the questions regarding Ladies' Day Out. Stewardship envelopes are available for us for picking up on the tables back to my left toward the narthex. So following the service, if you will try not to stumble over one another running to get your envelopes, but uh, you help the finance department by using those envelopes. Are there persons here who would like to be introduced that you've, you're a stranger with us or you're different or you're new? And, um, without putting anybody on the defense, if there's somebody like to be identified, we'd like to hear you. Wow. I I think I remember something like a confirmation for the parents. Uh, Thirty some years ago. Welcome, family. Today, after the service, if you have a poinsettia here that is yours and you have some place to share that, come and get it. Thank you. Thank you.
let's uh, don't pull out a lunch bag, but let's act like we enjoy one another and go say hi to each other. And you know what? The reason I wanted to look those up is because we get gifts that were like, yeah, that was awesome. We get gifts that we like a whole lot, right? 
But think about it. God gave his baby Jesus. How big of a thank you do we need to give God? Can we do it big enough? Not really. But we can also do a lot of things. Jesus came because God loved us. Jesus came and told us to love everyone else. So every day when you get up, you can say thank you very much to God for the gift of the baby Jesus, which is the gift that we can never say thank you enough for. But we can also thank God by loving those around us. Do you ever think to yourself, maybe today I'll clean my room without mom telling me? See, there you go. How about whoops, mom or dad or brother or sister looks like they're having a rough day? I think I'll go give them a hug. Or that person looks kind of sad. They need a smile. There's all sorts of things that you can do that don't even require any money at all that we can do to say, we love you. We hear the message from God that Jesus was born to show us the love. So this year, by the time I see you, it's going to be a new year next week, a whole new year. 2019 is almost over. We're going to start this year and think about love, 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 love. How's that? Good topic? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Let's have prayer together, and then we'll pray the most perfect. Dear God, we are thankful for the gift of your Son who became this baby Jesus. And this is the greatest gift you could ever give us to show us that you love us and that you want us to someday come live with you. And dear Lord, help us to love everyone and to show them that we care deeply. And now we will pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, you are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
going here. We have two different scripts, but that's all right. Please be seated. I, I invite you to join me in prayer at the chancel where uh, we have a couple situations that we want to lift up before you. Barbara Rao, who for half of a century did babysitting for us in our nursery volunteer ministry. She's recovering from a broken leg in Royal Oak. And uh, we solicit your prayers for Barbara. And you saw the absence of Carol Penn. And Nancy's wearing a couple hats this morning. Carol's in the hospital. So we cherish your prayers on behalf of Carol. Join me in prayer. God of grace, all mercy and goodness, we're just a few of millions who are bowing before you to express humble gratitude and a wonderment over the magnitude of your love for your creation. Your whole Christ event is just really beyond our imaginations. And to go through ritual and say the words thanks can sometimes sound like tinkling brass if our actions don't reveal your lordship. Oh God, forgive us where our lives seem to betray our prayerful pleas and promises. Our nation has celebrated your visitation in as, I guess, many ways as there are subcultures amongst us and much goodness of spirit and mind and body has been exercised in this Advent Christmas season. But somehow or other, it doesn't seem to even dent this nation's focus on debilitating divisiveness. It doesn't seem to relax our holding hedonism higher than your intended holiness. Seems like it has not led us away from leading the world in social illnesses and criminal ugliness. O oh Lord, shall this land be healed? Grant your church the vision and the empowerment to be and become whatever instrument you want us to be in your kingdom dream 
in this time and in this place. Oh, don't quit coming, Emmanuel. Uh, for, for Barbara, for Carol, for other precious persons whose names are on the lips of those gathered here around me, for all those in our midst and within our reach, suffering disease, some form of deprivation, depression. We humbly ask your comforting and healing mercy to anoint them. And Father, kind of in trepidation and fear, we ask if we happen to be your chosen vehicle for any of that to happen, quicken and empower us so as to answer the call. Father, help each of us to grow in our trust of your Lordship and grace, even when circumstances and challenges seem so painfully difficult. I ask this, trying to be in harmony with your spirit, all for your honor and your glory. Amen. If the uh, ushers would come forward at this time, they will help us offer the financial part of our offerings. And I would ask that you pray with me. Loving Father, in the mind's eyes of us, we see the extreme ridicule, rejection, and suffering inflicted upon the one you sent to come and be with us. And yet with compassion for the likes of us, he cried out, Father, forgive. You are so much for us that you send your life-transforming spirit to be with us and in us. Wow. At this offering time, accept, O oh Lord, our heartfelt offerings. And forgive us, Father, if and when we merely drop some leftovers in Sunday morning plates. Grant that we come to know the joy of being devoted to making grace-laden ministries really happen for others. Again, I ask this all to the glory of Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen.
I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. <coughs> Please be seated. Thank you, Jennifer, for your help. Thank you, choir, JD, Nancy. I see things are really well, uh, the, the, the clock down on the front pew said, I think, 10 o'clock when I started, and it still says 10 o'clock. So <laughs> Church, I, I ask you now, along with me, to take a deep breath in and then let it out slowly. Exhale slowly. Let's try it. One deep breath in. Now, please, relax and just try to cope. It's only this one time. Wayne is coming back next Sunday. <laughs> Even with a crippled voice and a fading mind, I still seem to say yes when asked to stand in while hoping not to get too much in God's way. Only when the Holy Spirit's presence is sought by both the one attempting to speak and the person in the pew, only when that is happening can what God intends through the foolishness of preaching. Only that way can it happen. Pray with me. Father God, grant that this mutual effort to resonate or, uh, of listening, speaking, grant it to somehow resonate with some meaningful aha content. Open our minds and our hearts to any holy happening that you intend through this foolishness of preaching. Again, to your glory, to the honor of the living Christ our Lord. Amen. Hungry hearts who know that there is something out there much greater than themselves gather as we did throughout the Advent season and they plead together in prayer and song, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Ransom, redeem us from the cap being captive to our trivia. Come and show us a path of higher knowledge. Come, be our banner, our standard, our leader. Bind all people's hearts and minds in one. Come, Emmanuel. Deliver us from earthly strife. And then beyond our safe institutional walls and the comfortable social settings and zones are unnumbered masses of oppressed humanity held hostage by deprivation of home, health, or any hope thereof. And their voices, without much song oftentimes, and with a lot of discord, however feebly and misunderstood by many they may, may be, their voices are lamenting the absence of this peace. Indeed, O come, O come, Emmanuel, is a cosmic cry. 
And yet, in, in the midst of this universal cry, are some sounds of praise in response by those who are receive. In unnumbered gatherings like this, these voices are singing, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel, God with us. Revealed through us. His name is called Emmanuel. These two songs, one, a plea, oh come. A second, um, a breathed prayer of pray, or praise on, on the part of the recipients. I think they promote a couple questions that seem worthy of our attention on this Christmas celebration Sunday. I never was one to design three-point sermons. I think probably because it took so long to get through the first point. But today I'm going to raise three questions. Very simple. These are, who is Emmanuel? Who is Emmanuel? What is Emmanuel's intent? And are you and Emmanuel realizing his holy intent? Now, you've got the questions. If it's snappy poo time, why go ahead, but you're going to miss out on some of the answers. Joseph, while struggling with the news of the pregnancy of his fiancée, received this announcement that God is somehow or other involved and a son is going to come forth. And Joseph, you are to call him Jesus. He's going to forgive the sins of his people. There's a much earlier and more expanded proclamation that Paul wrote to the church in Colossae. Listen, for he, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things were created. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. For in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. For in the word who became flesh, this person Jesus, all the fullness of God himself was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, making peace at the cost of his blood on the cross. Add to this what John attributes to Jesus when he quotes him saying, if you have seen me, Jesus saying to those around him, Questioning him, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. He and I are one and the same. Fantastic statement to come across human lips. One more. Father, I pray for all those who believe in me that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us one, so that the world may believe you have sent me. From our scriptures, do we have any doubt about Jesus becoming Emmanuel, God with us. And you say, no, that's so fundamental, you could have saved all your breath. Well, I want to remind us. And he came to reconcile, to restore to oneness his creation. Any doubts, considering the length he went for this whole Christ event, any doubts about God being for us?
even with all of our culturally introduced distortions at the heart of our Christmas traditional celebrations is the effort to model God's grace. It's taken the form of exchanging, giving and receiving gifts, an effort to extend ourselves to another. The joy and the benefit of receiving those gifts lies to a great extent of what we do with those gifts. I digress. Come with me. My father digging ditches for a dollar a day in Franklin Roosevelt's WPA Works Progress Administration in the, in the 30s, a dollar a day when his two children were born, made frugality a necessity, a necessity in the family. Fifty years after the Depression, my mama would still not eat green beans for having lived on them out of the garden for that decade of depression. So Christmas, in terms of gifts, was an occasion to replace some of the worn-out necessities of the family. Brian Crane's comic strip, Pickles, gave me a, both a chuckle and a kind of a fleeting feeling of something familiar a couple of weeks ago as I read it. Daughter Sylvia asks her dad Earl, Dad, what are you getting Mom for Christmas? And Earl says, Oh, I don't know. She, you know, she needs a new mop. <laughs> I remember boyhood Christmas under the tree consisting of several articles of necessity to replace the outgrown, the outworn clothing, and usually one or two items for which I know I had made it very clear I was hoping. No, though, though blessed with much goodness and seasonal excitement, expensive gifts were not a part of the, of the Titus family Christmases. When the tree came down a week later, the items of necessity were placed in the proper shelf in the wardrobe or closet or in the drawer of the dresser. And whatever felt importance they may have taken on, you went on into your routine day by day, week by week. But that used sled or that wagon or later that football and that basketball and hoop, or that used bicycle that was under the tree. Ah, they became part of me. They added to, they altered my childhood and youthhood activities. My day-by-day -day routine became different. So on to our question. The first one, we know. Jesus is Emmanuel. Second question, what is God's intent through Emmanuel? How much has he altered your life, routines? I'm going to respond for all of us to that question by immediately admonishing us to be reminded, no, no, let's resonate with the realization that Emmanuel God's coming to take up residence within is ours to know, to experience, to celebrate in an ever-growing dimensions. Christmas morning, you open a gift. The gift of Almighty God to us is God with us. The gift is to be opened. God with us. Ken Carter, retired bishop, author, in his book, Ministry with the Forgotten, 
And that in itself is a... Whew. Many of us ought to read that book. He quotes Sam Wells, now vicar of the Anglican Church in Trafalgar Square in London, when he says that with, quote unquote, with, is the most significant word in our, word in our Christian faith. Think about it. It was Jesus with them ministry that impacted all the followers. It wasn't all the teachings uh, that they heard about him. It was his with them ministry that transformed their lives. It is his with us time that he can and does change who we are. And without that with us time, my father and I, we will come to you and make our home with you. All this gift at Christ, Christmas time, the child who grows into the Lord Almighty, the conquering, cross conquering king, says, and I will come to you again. Christmas introduces the whole great gift with us. Why? To do what? An exhausted store manager on Christmas Eve retreats to his desk, brokenhearted because death had taken his little son a week before. One of the first letters that he picked up was addressed to Santa Claus North Pole. The postman, a personal friend of this store manager, had picked up this letter at the store manager's house and re-delivered it to him. And there was a note he attached to the envelope. He said, this was given to me by a girl at 302 Walnut Street. Well, obviously that got the store manager's attention because that's his home address. He opened it and he read, Dear Santa, we are very sad at our house this year. Don't bring me anything. My little brother went to heaven last week and we are oh so sad. All I want for you to do is when you come, I will have his toys in the corner beside the chimney. Take his toys to him, Santa. He's going to be lost without the train and the hobby horse and the other toys, particularly the horse. You needn't mind leaving me anything, but if you could give Daddy something to help him stop crying, I sure wish you would. I heard him tell Mommy the only thing that could cure him was eternity. Santa... Could you bring him some of that? Signed, I will be your good girl, Miriam. That's it, folks. That's it. That's his intent that you and I can tap into and are to be tapping into some of his eternity, his healing, his growing into a new, greater bigness and beauty of being, our finding fulfillment of joy and purpose and value and meaning, that, as Jesus said in his prayer, we should know the fullness of the Father here and now. Here and now. He did not tantalize us with the gift of his presence that we can have sometime in his heaven. He's bringing us into the whole process of putting some heaven here on earth. Now. Christ's kingdom is not something far off. He reigns as king now in pockets of persons all around this globe. His intent 
is to build up these pockets and expand them until his kingdom dream is realized. What is the kingdom dream? He revealed that in his prayer when he said, Disciples, pray like this. Pray that God's kingdom come here now on earth as it is in his heaven. God is so much for us, church, that he came to reveal and redeem and he comes again as king and yet companion to be with us. Now, we kind of got to work that out as to uh, how nonchalant we become companions with the king. He does not want us to miss out on knowing some of his eternity here and now. So church, let's recognize he did not come here primarily to save the church. No, no, no. Much, much bigger. He comes to the church to equip us for revealing him to the world. Emmanuel, God with us. And then God revealed through us. He intends this peace, this justice, this growing into right relationships, this wholeness of being, and, and a joy and a comfortable humanity that makes up his creation. He intends that for the world. Ponder this sobering thought. God could be counting on you and me to be the primary embodiment of his affirming, sustaining presence to another person or to a group or an organization? Last question. Uh -huh. Two-thirds of the way through. Have you really opened the gift that the Father and the Christ of Christmas have offered you? And is that gift being employed? Has it totally changed your routine? Does your celebration of this Christmas include your making room in your heart Making room in your day-by-day -day routine. Making room in the time of your attentiveness to him so that he can really reside within and, and have this communication, this dialogue. Is God enjoying, is God enjoying his Christmas intent? For you, with you. Think on this. To the extent that the church really celebrates Emmanuel by welcoming his lordship coming within us. To the extent we do that, the cosmic cry of fallen humankind will become an eventual diminishing bunch of white noise. To the extent that the church really celebrates Emmanuel, the ugliness of this American culture will start losing its grip on corrupt American corporate and political actions. And for us, we might experience the joy of being involved in one other person or maybe an organization experiencing a mini or maybe a major transformation. There's a picture I'd like to have on the screen. We have that? Yeah. Please forgive any gender exclusion. It's not intended, ladies. But that's you in the picture. And the Lord is tapping you on the shoulder. 
Now, I don't mean to be over dramatic, but I think it's worthy of being a very direct question from this pulpit. Is he tapping you on the shoulder, still seeking, wishing, maybe a little frustrated, disappointed, trying to seek you to turn around and open up an intended intimacy with him? I mean, is, is it like saying, come on, open a Christmas present. Turn to me. Or, there's another picture. Thank you. Are you and he there joined in mind and heart looking out to where he wants to take you next? That is God's intent about the Christmas gift, Emmanuel. Is any one of you trying to celebrate something less? Let's sing that little chorus of praise. Let's do it with excitement. It's on 204. It's on the screen. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us. And then let's, let's don't quit. But the second time around, we're going to do it a cappella and prayerfully. And let's see if all of our voices can be joined in prayerfully contemplating God revealed through me. Emmanuel Emmanuel His name is called God with us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Do you know how much joy in the world that will produce when it becomes an opened, used gift? Let's stand and sing joy to the world.
may you know the peace of Christ that surpasses any other kind of peace you can make on your own as you go forward letting your life be a praise song God revealed through you. May you know the joy and the peace of that now and forever.